Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and on this episode of Price and Crafting, we're going to make a super cute t-shirt, but I have some other stuff to show you. And we're going to talk about Matthew, uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 13, where Jesus is telling the disciples and the other believers to um, go and be the salt and the light of the earth. We're going to focus on salt. So, that's what we'll be doing. Um, as you're hopping on, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to sprinkle all that good stuff. Okay, a few days ago, we made these pieces for my kitchen. And I used a mix of chalk paste, blue ice, azure, um, dusky blue or dusty blue, and white. Okay, so I showed you those two little signs that we made. We also made this. Even the wind and the waves obey him. Did I forget to flip my camera? Uh, I don't know if I can do that now that I've started it. Let me see. Huh. I don't know. Um, anyway, so before I did went live just now, I made this. Yes, we are backwards. Let's see if I can fix that. There we go. Be salty, Matthew 5, 13. So I used these same, all these same colors to make this adorable little um, sign that I'm gonna put in my kitchen close to my stove. And it's sort of summery colors, but it's a great message to be salty. So I used all the same colors as this with the idea that it would all go together. And this little piece right here is called a 11 by 14 farmhouse sign or farmhouse frame. Okay, so that is uh, one thing that you can do. We're gonna do something kind of similar, but we're gonna do it with this t-shirt, all right? And I purchased this t-shirt last week, I think, at Hobby Lobby. Um, it's a fitted t-shirt, it's fashion gear brand. I always get an XL for myself because I like to be able to throw my t-shirts in the dryer. And I have put a piece, two thicknesses of um, paper towel in the middle where my stencil will be so that I don't soak through the front onto the back, okay? And um, so we're gonna use this stencil which will be released on uh, May 10th, which is this coming Wednesday if you're, if you're watching live. Um, and I love this already. Oh my goodness, I totally love it. Uh, and we're gonna do kind of a swirly do technique. And then we're gonna talk about whether or not we are salty. And that's really good, you guys. Okay, this is a um, t-shirt placement kit that I'm just going to eyeball and that is a big help to when you're laying your stencil on okay so this has been used once but I'm not gonna fuzz it and you know why I'm not gonna fuzz it because I'm using it on fabric so there's really no need to fuzz it on fabric if you are just gonna use it on fabric All right, I need to pull my paper towel down, kind of over. Okay. You can also use the um, the inking mat. Uh, it's good, but I prefer to honestly to just use a paper towel or a piece of cardboard or something. I see lots of people hopping on, and somebody already did stars. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay, and I'm using um, sort of beachy colors, so we're going to use this turquoise ink it's permanent ink and this is called berry blue it's ink and then we'll be using some white ink okay here's the difference this is chalk paste it has a black lid ink has a white lid uh, ink is for fabric and I'll tell you all about heat setting it 
um, so that it'll be permanent so I can wash this t-shirt. You can't use chalk paste on a project like this, I'm sorry to say. Okay, and I'm gonna, gonna just do um, a bunch of little dabs of these colors, and then we're gonna swirl them around. We'll add some white to it, and um, yeah, I'm hoping it's gonna look great. I love the idea of um, being salty and how that can play with summer. Um, so, okay, so I think I'll start with this berry blue first. I may wash off my other sign at some point and show you on a live video how to do that, but I couldn't really do that now because I only have one of this stencil and I would need to have more than one if I was uh, going to be able to do two projects with it. So you can see I'm just kind of plopping it down here and there. And you don't want to move too slowly. Okay, and then I'm going to plunk on. I think I'll just put a blob of white right here that I can grab. Okay, and I'm just taking a small cut apart squeegee. And I'm going to do this sort of swirly, swirly do thing. Maybe I didn't put enough ink on. I think this is going to probably be very pretty. So I'm going to get all my ink on and kind of swirl around and then I will come back and pull the excess off. So if you are watching this video live, um, this beautiful stencil that I'm using, oops, I forgot down here, it um, will be available on May 10th. It will be released on May 10th. Uh, creators like myself are able to order, oh, I forgot my white, put some of that on, are able to um, get their little hands on some of the new releases earlier than customers. So that's why I have it. And as soon as I do my peel and reveal, I am going to um, show you how to heat set something. Okay, so I've got it fully covered, and now I'm gonna just take a different squeegee, and I'm gonna pull off the places where my ink is really thick. I'm moving fairly quickly. I'm not putting this ink back in these pots, because it's a mixture of colors, and you know, I wanna keep my pots uh, the original color. Okay, I feel like I need a little bit of turquoise right here. Okay. All right, so that's what it looks like. my fingers so that it will look oh my gosh it's so cool you guys this looks like it's tie-dyed which is exactly the effect I wanted oh my goodness okay I'm throwing my stencil in a little bath of water over here let me get my hands cleaned off oh my goodness wow uh, I'm always amazed 
when things actually go uh, like I was thinking they would. Look at that, you guys. I swear, it's the putting the white on last that makes the hugest difference. So, I'm gonna set this over here. I may come back, possibly, and do something with one of the sleeves, um, with like a little Christian stencil. I'm not sure, but let me get my lids on my pots, and then I'll show you this sign one more time, and then we will hop into the Bible. It is gorgeous, isn't it, Anne? Oh my gosh, I get so excited. <laughs> okay, so to heat set something, once that is 100% dry, I would set my iron, or if you have a heat press, you can use that, but I just have a regular iron. I would set it on cotton, because that is a cotton t-shirt. It can handle cotton, no steam, and then, I would lay my t-shirt down, it has to be fully dry, put this over the top of my t-shirt, and do three or four minutes on the front, moving my iron around, cotton, no steam, and then I turn it inside out, and I do the same thing. The parchment paper just protects my iron, which honestly has never been a problem, but just to make sure that I don't get melted ink all over my iron, that is why I use parchment paper. Okay. So, this was the cute little sign that I'm going to put in my kitchen. It goes with the other things that I've made, and I did the exact same kind of technique, but I used chalk paste, not permanent ink. Chalk paste is for these kind of projects. It has black lid. Ink is for t-shirts, tea towels tote bags, pillows, that kind of thing. Anything that is fabric that you will want to be able to wash, you need to use permanent ink. And when I'm all finished, if you want information, product information about anything, just let me know and I'll be glad to grab that for you. So. Hey, let me grab my Bible. This, uh, this week oops, was such an interesting, um, interesting subject to think about, and it will be, I'm sure, also to talk about. So let's see if I can come any closer. There, that's better, right? Okay, so here's what I want to ask you. Before I pray, are you salty? And you're probably thinking that sounds really weird. So ask yourself, are you salty? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for Christ and crafting. Thank you, Lord, for the people who are watching. Please be with me. Please give me the words to say, guide our conversation. Um, Take me to the scriptures that you would like me to share. And um, I just pray that the result of this conversation we're about to have will be an encouragement to uh, the Christ followers who are out there watching to be salty. And that if there is anyone who is not yet a Christ follower, that it will be an encouragement to them to make the decision for Jesus Christ. So just be with me, Lord. Thank you so much for this time. Thank you so much for your word. And I pray all this in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Okay, so are you salty? Today we're going to talk about Matthew 5.13. And it was part of Jesus's Sermon on the Mount. Look at here. And um, Jesus was talking in this talk about being salty. He was talking to the disciples and to believers, okay? He was not talking to people who didn't know who he was or hadn't made a decision about him during this part. And he was basically telling them, telling the disciples and believers to be the salt and light in the world. 
So today, we're just going to talk about salt. Maybe next week we'll talk about light because, oh my word, there's so much to say about being the light for Jesus in this world. But we're going to talk about salt. So let me read those verses to you, and then I want to read you a note. And then we'll go a few chapters later in the book of Matthew, and we'll look at something else. Okay, so this is the book of Matthew, chapter 5. And the little subtitle here says, Jesus teaches about salt and light. And um, I've heard a lot of different sermons about this verse, obviously, because I've scribbled all over in my Bible. I've studied it in my community Bible study. It's a really good verse. So this is what Jesus says. It's in red, so we know he is talking. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. So we are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its saltiness, then it's not good for anything except to be thrown out and be trampled on by men. That's what Jesus was telling them. And in the note for that verse, I have a life application study Bible and we're, it's um, New International Version, NIV. Um, love this kind of a Bible. I fully believe every single person should have a paper Bible that's written in a translation that they can understand, that they can write their life in, that they can record their thoughts, their conversations, um, their relationship with Jesus Christ. So let me know if you don't have a paper Bible and I can get you a link to an online store where you can order a paper Bible if you would like a life application one in whatever translation, even in large print, and they have a huge variety of prices. And just so you know, it's like an online Christian bookstore. I don't have any affiliation with them. My, um, my motive is that I want you to have God's word in your hands because it makes all the difference. Okay, so this note says, if a seasoning has no flavor, it has no value. If Christians make no effort to affect the world around them, they are of little value to God. If we are too much like the world, we are worthless. Christians should not blend in with everyone else. Instead, we should affect others positively just as seasoning brings out the best flavor in food. Isn't that good? Those are the kind of notes that just really um, amplify my understanding of Scripture. Okay, so now I'm going to Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 to 20. And um, th these were some of the last words that Jesus said to the disciples, it's in red, um, and they're important. Um, he said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, he's telling the disciples, he's telling us, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Um, the note here says, when someone is dying or leaving us, his or her last words are very important. Jesus left the disciples with these last words of instructions. They were under his authority. They were to make more disciples. They were to baptize and teach the new disciples to obey Christ. Christ would always be with them. Uh, and then it goes on a little bit further down and it says, we are to go, whether it is next door or to another country, and make disciples. It is not an option, but a command to all who call Jesus the Lord. We are not all evangelists in the formal sense, but we have all received gifts that we can use to help fulfill the Great Commission. The Great Commission is to go make disciples, to, sh to share the gospel, the good news of the gospel. Um, 
And as we obey, we have comfort in the knowledge that Jesus is always with us. So, let's back up and talk about what, what uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, is really telling us. Um, first of all, Jesus is talking to believers here. He's not talking to the unbelievers or unsaved or people who do not know about Jesus. Um, he was talking to them about their influence on this dark world that we live in and about how they could be worthy witnesses of the gospel. And he was not calling everyone to become preachers or to go on foreign missionary travels. Um, he was just telling them basically how to live their lives and be a worthy witness to himself, Jesus Christ. So, a couple distinctions. I want to make sure that everyone understands that um, being the salt of the earth, basically letting people see Jesus through our lives, that is not a condition to getting saved. So you don't have to go be whatever, a witness to Jesus' life, in order to be saved. And um, in Ephesians, whoops, Ephesians chapter um, 2, let me go there, verses 8 to 9, it's plainly stated that this is the case. It has nothing to do with getting saved. Ephesians 2, verses 8 to 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So it's clearly stated here. Um, being saved is a gift of God that we receive through our faith, not our actions or works, okay? So it's not this uh, being salty, being the salt of the earth, is not to do, has not, well, it does have something to do, but it's not a prerequisite or a requirement to getting saved. And when they talk, when Jesus talks about when salt loses its saltiness and it's thrown out and trampled on, he is not saying that if you are not a worthy witness, if you are not salty, that you could lose your salvation. So I just want to make that crystal clear that um, we receive our salvation through faith in Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, and that he is who he says he is, and he did what he says, said he did. And we cannot lose our salvation. It's impossible. Once we become a child of God, we are forever a child of God. And our names are inscribed in the Lamb's Book of Life. So don't let this confuse you to think that um, you have to be salty to be saved or that you could lose your salvation if you aren't salty. Okay, so it's really just about being a worthy witness and making a difference in this very dark world with the way that we live, okay? It could be that you're a preacher, it could be that you're a foreign missionary, but I think what this is generally speaking about is um, how we live. Letting others see Jesus through our lives, through us. Um, and it's, you guys, it's always so amazing. God is so good. So we were watching um, church, on TV this morning. We, we like to watch Free Chapel with Pastor Jensen Franklin. And he was talking today about, in different words and different verses in the Bible, but about the same thing. That as Christians, we are to go make disciples. It's not an option, it's a command. That's what Jesus told us, that's what he wants us to do. And we are not to be quiet. So don't keep it a secret. Um, 
And I just, I told my husband, that's exactly what I'm going to talk about. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I kept saying that. So let's look at salt. Um, there's two things about salt that I want to talk about. The first one is how it is a flavor enhancer. And the second one is how it can be a preservative. Okay, so salt enhances the flavor of food. And we need to think, if we are being the salt of the earth, if we are living our lives salty, are we enhancing the lives of the people we come into contact with? Uh, and knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior is the best way to have an enhanced life now, here on earth, and an eternal life in the future. So, are we enhancing the lives of the people that we come into contact with through the way we are living, what we're saying, doing, behaving, you know, all of that, or not? Um, so that's how it is a flavor enhancer. We can enhance the flavor of people's lives uh, by letting them see Jesus. The second thing is it's a preservative. And, you know, back in uh, Jesus's time, they didn't have refrigerators, of course. No. So salt was used as a preservative on meat to keep it from spoiling and rotting. And we should ask ourselves, are we being a preservative in the lives of the unsaved people that we are coming into contact with? Are we being a preservative? Um, knowing Jesus and placing trust in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior is the only way to preserve uh, life. Um, because this world is full of sin and death, and to have an eternal life, you have to have Jesus Christ. Okay, so it preserves life. It also makes it so much better to go through this life. Okay, now I want to go to Romans chapter 6. God just kept showing me more and more verses as I was studying and thinking about this. Um, Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So in case you thought I made that up, it's, in, it's throughout the Bible. Uh, so here's some things to think about. Are we salty? Are we salty? Are we living out what we believe about Jesus? Can others see Jesus in us? If you've been commenting, my comments are frozen, but I will look at everything when I'm finished. Uh, so can, G can other people see Jesus Christ in our lives? Are we making the most of the valuable opportunities that we're given to make an eternal difference in our very dark world? Um, so I want to just close here with something that I scribbled in the margin many years ago. And I don't remember for sure when it was, but I do remember that this was something that our pastor, Andy Stanley, said. And it's scribbled right here on the side, going up here. He said about these verses of being salt and light to the earth, to the world. He said, a living example is better than a lengthy explanation. Let me say that again. A living example of the gospel of Jesus Christ is better than a lengthy explanation of what the gospel of Jesus Christ is. And I just, when I saw that in my notes and other things that I scribbled here too, I just thought, wow, that really summarizes everything. What are people seeing in me? I want people to see me and be able to tell that I have something different that they may want. And I'm sure you do too. Whether they're believers now, but they're lukewarm Christians, you know, they're not, 
They're not going one direction or another. They're kind of stale and just sitting in their faith and keeping it a secret. I want, I want to be a living example to them of what life with Jesus Christ here and now can be. And I want to be a witness to the confidence that I have that I will be, be with my Lord and Savior in eternity after this life too. So let's be worthy witnesses, all of us, in all our different ways. Um, big and small of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and let's be salty. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Let me grab my t-shirt one more time and show you. When this is fully dry, I cannot wait to wear this. I'll probably wear it with jeans. I have several jean skirts or a jean jacket, but I just love all the different blues. It looks very beachy to me. Um, anyways, I love this verse from Matthew, chapter 5, verse 13, and it definitely, just studying and preparing for this has really inspired me, and I hope it has inspired you too. Um, and if you do not know who Jesus Christ is, look around you. I am certain that there are people who are Christ followers in your circle. And ask them your questions. Get a Bible. Get reading in a Bible. And make the decision for Christ today. Because we're not guaranteed another day. And it's the most important decision that you've you will ever make. If you're a lukewarm Christian, which I know I go, I ebb and flow in cycles throughout my life where I'm trying really near and intently focused and I'm pursuing that relationship with Jesus Christ, and then I drift away. So I go from being a hot Christian to a lukewarm Christian. And then, you know, back and up and down again and again. So if you are feeling like you are uh, lukewarm, pray and ask God to give you a hunger, a desire to draw near to him, to intensely pursue him, and he will. So let me just pray and then we'll be all finished. I will get pictures of the projects from today. Let me show you this one too. And um, if you would like, this is an awesome stencil. I totally recommend it. Totally. If you are a believer, you should get that Be Salty Matthew 513 stencil. But if you would like a link so you don't have to hunt it down, just let me know and I'll be glad to get that for you. Or if you want info on inks or chalk paste or this wood surface, this farmhouse frame or anything else, just let me know. Wow, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this message. Lord, I just praise you. I just praise you, Lord. You are so loving, kind, amazing. You have such a good plan for us. And Lord, I just pray that you will help all of us to be salty, to be worthy witnesses of the amazing gospel. Uh, both so that people can live the rest of this life here in this dark world with you and so they can have eternal life when this dark world is over with you. So I just pray all that. I lift up the people who are hurting right now. Um, seems like everyone is going through something so let those people feel your presence this week. Let them really know that you're there and that you care and that you have a good plan for them. Um, I pray that if there's somebody out there who does not know you yet, that they will find a Christ follower and ask questions. And I just thank you so much for this crafting opportunity that you gave me several years ago and that you've encouraged me to keep going, Christ and crafting on Sundays. It is, Lord, it's the, the biggest, most wonderful blessing in my life. And I just thank you for that. So be with us now. I pray all of this 
in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Alrighty. I'm going to go sit down. Yes, be a shaker of salt. Um, I'm going to go sit down and read all of your comments. My comments were frozen for a while, so I, if you were saying things, I couldn't see it for a little bit. Um, if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. If you want a, a link for an online Bible store, um, let me know. I'll be glad to get that for you. If you want information on any of this goodness, let me know that too. And Oh, and feel free to sprinkle and do this. That's a heart. Or say something to me in the comments. Okay? Alrighty. Have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you guys tomorrow.